Welcome to Unit 6. Now we are talking about non-standard libraries. In Unit 5 you have learned how to download and to install these libraries. Now have a look in a few of those. Some of these libraries are that big that they justify a complete course of its own. So we can only dig a little bit into this one. First one will be requests, which is a library to communicate with web servers. And Beautiful Soup works hand in hand with requests because Beautiful Soup supports you in analyzing HTML web pages. Then we will have a look on Takeinter. Takeinter is a library which allows you to define and create graphical user interfaces, GUIs. And finally, we'll have a look on Pandas and Matplotlib. Pandas is a library to really work with big amount of data. For example, if you would like to go for machine learning projects, then you typically have to handle big amount of data. And Matplotlib is able to visualize this data. So it's showtime. Let's go into the notebook and we'll see what we can find there. So, as said, let's start with requests. I have before installed and downloaded all these uh, libraries we're talking now about and have used the pip command for that. What you can see is here requests and requests offers a method get and uh, we have a parameter which is a URL, a uniform resource locator, namely a web address for a certain web page. What you can see is we are pointing at Wikipedia and we are looking for the article about Python. And then we do a print uh, uh, with a F string and we simply count how, how often the word Python is used in this uh, article. Let's run this. And you see the uh, article can be found 1352 times. If you are trying out this, uh, this cell, maybe you will come to a different result. That's because the article of Python might have changed when you run this uh, code. If you would like to make a little deeper analysis of this web page or of any other web page, then maybe Beautiful Soup is a library of choice. So you can see here I have both imported requests and Beautiful Soup. And uh, I'm now downloading the title page, the home page of The Guardian, an English newspaper. And uh, then I'm looking for all H3 tags. So when working with the Beautiful Soup, it is of course of um, help if you have an idea how HTML, how um, hypertext markup language works like. In there we have tags, for example H3, to indicate here's a heading 3. And in the Guardian all these headings or most of the headings are labeled with this H3 tag. So we can search for it and if you go through it, yeah, then you can see you get lots of titles. These are the titles of the today's articles in the Guardian. And you can see it's about Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine war. It's lots of in here, it's lots of Corona, it's lots of politics, sport. But these are all these um, titles which you can find on The Guardian today. Again, if you run this code, this will have changed because of course The Guardian updates their article day by day. Let's have a look on Takeinter. Takeinter is a library to enable you to build graphical user interfaces. So let's first run it. So you see now it's running, however, the graphical user interface is hiding in the back. So I'm trying to find it. Here it is. And what have I defined? You see I have a graphical user interface with two buttons. If I click on this button, now you can see in here button was pressed, some line is written. Uh, if I press it more often, then all the time we enable a print command. 
And if I press on quit, the graphical user interface disappears. Actually, implementing a graphical user interface is quite easy. The code is a little bit lengthy, but it's not too complicated. What you can see here, here the buttons are defined. Yeah? And here I have defined two functions which are um, called once the button is pressed. Let's continue with pandas. Pandas is good for analyzing a big amount of data. So let's first run this cell and you see it takes a little while because actually this um, CSV file contains 100,000 lines of data. Yeah, so what you can see here is with uh, info I first do get an overview of the files. These are the different columns. I have 100,000 non-null um, attributes which are of type float64. I don't want to go into the details. And then I see the head. The first two lines are given in here. So this is a little bit small now. That's why these uh, two lines 0 and 1 are uh, printed in uh, with, with, a, with a line break. You could as well um, select, let's say, only one column of this data frame. And you can see here we have the first five uh, entries and here we have the last five of the 100,000 entries. So not going to do the detail what these are all about. And of course Pandas enables you to not only show the data but to do calculations. So what I've done in here is I'm calculating the average, the mean values of all these columns um, and you see the results. Maybe you would not only like to show the results, but you would like to visualize it. And then matplotlib is the library of choice. Let's go in here and run this code. And now you can see um, from our data frame we have had above, we can see one column with all the values. So you can see um, a, a bar chart where the, the values are simply printed um, Actually, the, the uh, current picture is not of so much of interest, the details. It's more that you can simply with a few clicks and with a few lines of code produce such kind of windows. Finally, um, let's have a look on our last matplotlib example. We import random and we import, import matplotlib once again to simply show a Gaussian distribution. Yeah, so what you can see here is I have produced in here um, a histogram. Yeah? I have a hundred bins uh, and I have had uh, a range of a hundred thousand random values. If I lower the number of bins yeah, and rerun the code, you can see now I have just 10 different bins. So the curve doesn't or the, the, the shape doesn't look uh, as good anymore. If I increase the number of bins, for example, I go up to, or let's say 500, it takes a little while. You see, however, that some of these bars are a little big bit, um, the curve is not that flattened, the shape is not that flattened. Yeah, so maybe if we increase the number in here, we have not 100,000, but 1 million uh, random values, then um, the average values will um, flatten down, so you have an average, uh, a more sh um, a finer shape. In it. This is what you can do with all these uh, matplotlib and uh, with random and with pandas and so on. So what you can see, there is a multitude of, of opportunities which you can go for. So what did you learn? I have just tried to show you that there is really powerful libraries outside and many of them are worth to be explored. I could just dig a little bit into it. But now for you the world is open, the world of programming, the world of exploring much more libraries. Go and find and make your own project.